Hi everyone, welcome to the manse for a quick midweek update from Gilgal Baptist Church. The word manse is a contraction of words, the man of God's house, and I hope that that will be the case. Uh, as you listen to this video, you're going to have a, a short biblical devotional thought for the day. I'm going to bring some news of the church and people in the church and their situations and bring us some points for prayer. So welcome to the manse. Come on in. So Noah was in the ark with his family and the animals for over a year, while the Apostle Paul was imprisoned under house arrest in Rome for two years, and yet their faith held strong through all of their trials and troubles. And if we look at the Bible, and we look at people who believe in Jesus and believe in the living God, we find many more people who were uh, under restrictions or found themselves in difficult circumstances, very much like our own today. In the Old Testament, we could think of people like Joseph in prison in Egypt or Jeremiah being stuck down the well. In the New Testament, Peter and Paul were constantly in and out of prison because of their faith in Jesus Christ and their faith held firm. God was with them through their circumstances and used them in those situations. Today, I want us to think about the Apostle John on the island of Patmos. The year is around 90 to 95 AD and the Emperor Caesar Domitian uh, is in control of the Romans and uh, he hates the Jews and he hates the Christians and has many of them exiled or killed. And John is the last of the original 12 apostles. All the other apostles who had stayed faithful to Jesus had died proclaiming the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. They died for the gospel of Christ. And John is now interned on the island of Patmos, a tiny little Greek island just off the west coast of what we would call Turkey. He's alone, he's afraid, but God is with him. If you know the story from Revelation chapter 1 verses 9 to 20, it's Sunday, the Lord's Day, and John perhaps is seeking to worship God even in his suffering. And as he does so, he has a vision of Jesus. Now John had known Jesus in his humanity, known Jesus in his human form before his ascension to heaven. But on this occasion, he doesn't see Jesus as an ordinary human being. He sees Jesus as an extraordinary human being. He sees Jesus in his heavenly form, Jesus in his glory, Jesus full of majesty and power and authority. Now our church motto is to know Jesus better. And I'd love it if I could help us to know Jesus as the Son of God, God the Son, in all his authority, glory, majesty and power. So Jesus describes himself to John as the one who is the first and the last, uh, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the one who was there before everything was made and the one who will be still in existence when this universe comes to its conclusion. He is the living one who died and rose again, a direct reference to the resurrection and the Christian faith is all about the cross and resurrection of Jesus Christ, the center point of history, not just for this planet, but for the whole of this cosmos. And Jesus describes himself as the one who has the keys over death and hell. He's the one who's in command. He's the one who has authority and power. And then he brings John a word of direction, a word of command. Jesus tells John to write, to write what was, what is, and what is yet to come. To write about things from the past, things that are affecting his present, and what the Holy Spirit will reveal to him about his future. And John indeed does this. He writes about the past. John writes about the past when he writes about the gospel of Jesus Christ and uh, about Jesus' life on earth. He writes about the present when he writes his epistles to the churches and to church members that we have in the New Testament. And he writes about the future when he writes that amazing book that we call Revelation. And these books were inspired by God and are still blessing many Christians like you and me 
when we read them today, nearly 2,000 years later. Is this God's word for us today? Right, right for me. I wonder if there's someone that you can write to. Maybe send them a card or a letter, an email or a text. Someone that you can stay in contact with through WhatsApp or one of the other media uh, links that we have at our disposal. Because there are so many people who need to know of God's love. And as John, in his circumstances, out of his suffering and trials, reaches out to others with the love of Jesus by writing, so also God can use us in that way. So is this God's word for you and I this week? Write for me. Write for Jesus. Let's give him glory and honour. This Sunday is Palm Sunday. Uh, Steve and Ali and members of our Sunday club are putting together a special uh, Palm Sunday family service for us that will be on our Facebook page and on our media this coming Sunday. We will be trialling some new technology, so please uh, be patient with us and remember this in your prayers. On Good Friday, I'm hoping to uh, lead uh, home communion uh, uh, from the manse here. Uh, we'll be having a communion service. Join in if you can. I'm hoping to do that at 11 o'clock. And then we have some special, uh, I believe, magazines uh, that we would love to share around the church. Uh, some great stories in there for you to read. And also some uh, New Life Easter newspapers. Uh, we've got a hundred of these. We'd like to distribute them. If you can let me know. Uh, if you'd like a copy of either the magazine or the, uh, or the newspaper, uh, give me a ring or email me at the address at the bottom or the top of the page and uh, I will get these to you or push them through your letterbox. And, and finally, some points for prayer for this week. Uh, we know of at least one family from our church who are grieving the loss of a loved one at this present time. Uh, it's not directly related to the coronavirus, but if you could remember them in prayers, I don't want to mention them uh, on Facebook by name, but uh, the details will be in the church newsletter, which we're still sending out by email. Please let us know if you don't already get a weekly copy. Perhaps we can also remember in prayer Christians who are at the bottom of the pile when it comes to help, love and care during the coronavirus in uh, many countries around the world, praying also for the scientists as they seek a cure, and for the doctors and nurses and others on the front line of helping those who are in special need. Let's pray also for Christians in the United Kingdom, where our freedoms are constantly being eroded, and uh, there are two major cases going to court at the moment from the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association and Destiny Church in Scotland who have been stopped from holding large meetings in uh, conference halls because of uh, Christian morals and values. Uh, please would you pray that uh, that will be changed so that Christians can again freely proclaim the name of the Lord Jesus Christ within our nation. And if there are others that are known to you, please lift them up into prayer because we want to remember people. People are important to God. God loved people. That's why he made so many of us. Uh, now let me just say a little closing prayer for us all. Now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.